the military base of Bretigny sur Orge in the Paris region. Antoine, a 23 year old lieutenant, is about to experience an ordeal that all future fighter pilots dread. You're going to close your eyes, breathe normally, relax completely. Blood pressure, electrocardiogram, all vital parameters are screened. The physical conditions have to be perfect to withstand acceleration. Today, the centrifuge test. Officer student for the past four years, he dreams of flying a combat plane one day. You have to be a bit patient. I've been there for a few years and you still need to work a bit. Antoine will undergo accelerations of up to 6G, six times his weight. The electrocardiogram is perfect. The electrodes on his torso will allow doctors to monitor his reactions during the exercise. Thanks, you never know. What are these bags? It's the vomit bag. Like Antoine, every year. A hundred pilots come here to test their limits under Olivier's eye. Launch authorization. His mission, to prevent future fighter pilots from losing consciousness. Three French pilots died in the last 15 years after fainting. Two, one, let's go. As part of filmed exercise. Breathe. This American pilot is subject to 9G, which is nine times his weight. Breathe. The more the pressure goes up, the more deformed his face becomes. Eventually, he fainted. To avoid this kind of in-flight scenario, the Air Force has developed breathing techniques that minimize the effect of accelerations. Antoine takes a seat in the centrifugal machine. My objective, get out of here alive. This is the first time for the student pilot. In the control room. Ready for takeoff. Three, two, one, go. The head physician accompanies him in his breathing maneuvers. One, two, three, breath. Antoine contracts his rib cage to boost his blood circulation. He should avoid the narrowing his field of vision or worse still, blackout. Is there a light veil or not? No, not yet. Tell me when it appears. I think it's showing up. 3G5, maneuver. One, two, three, breathe. 4G, one, two, three, breathe. One, two, three, breathe, keep going. After a minute at full speed, Antoine has still not lost consciousness. One, two, three, breathe. Despite a marked face, the apprentice pilot withstood the shock. It lasted 6G for 20, 30 seconds. He was able to endure because he did perfect anti-G maneuvers. He is totally made for this job. He has chosen well. Mission accomplished for Antoine. Yes, it's good. It a good feeling. Are we going for spin or not? <laughs> Before officially becoming a fighter pilot in the Air Force, young recruits are tested and trained daily to prepare for war. It is important for me to defend the values of my country. There must be people who are dedicated to do it. It gives me great satisfaction to be able to do it. Today, France has 900 active fighter pilots. They are deployed in the Sahel and the Middle East. They are waging war from the sky, especially against ISIS terrorists. Quentin and Talia were recruited after passing the competitive entry exams into major engineering schools. They are just starting their studies in the Air Force. I will go to war. Their objective is to pass the classes to gain access to the dagger ceremony, an initiatory ritual that will make them officers. Becoming a fighter pilot is also possible with a simple high school diploma. 
Jin Charles, a student pilot for the past year, follows a less well-known course, but just as demanding. Work can stop overnight. We are in the hot seat at all times. We will experience our very first bursting flight from the inside a latest generation fighter plane. We're going to do a little rotation, are you ready? Okay. It's insane. After six years of training, Richie, the captain, is through with his practice on Alpha Jet, the patrol plane of France. Now the aim is to learn how to deliver weapons. To achieve his wings as a pilot, he will have to face emergency situations such as the crash of his plane in the open sea, Pierre, 30 years old, face blurred due to security reasons, will experience his first operational mission at the center of fight against terrorism in Africa. That's it. Let's go. We're off to do real war missions. For several months, we followed these young Air Force student pilots. How are they selected, trained to fly, and prepared for combat? An immersion in the making of heroes. The adventure of becoming a fighter pilot sometimes begins on a small airfield. We're going to put all of that back there. Go on. We are next to Grenoble. These are father and son. They often fly in this small plane. Today is not an outing like the others. Taking off for our last flight together. We will listen to the runway and we're going to shut the glass roof. Quentin is 20 years old. Tomorrow, he leaves the region to join the prestigious Air Force School. With a dream in mind, one day take control of a fighter plane. His father, Eric, is a former lieutenant colonel of the Air Force. He transmitted the virus to him. It's our office all the time. You see, the wallpaper is always different. It's truly a pleasure. Obviously, while flying, we slowly acquire this passion, and I chose to make it my life. The life of a pilot to serve France. Like his father 30 years ago, Quentin is getting ready to leave. That's my dad's officer outfit. You have the Legion of Honor, the Aeronautical Medal. Ever since I was a kid, I see my dad in this. I tell myself, it's the accomplishment of a lifetime. It's kind of my childhood dream, yeah. To join the air school, Quentin worked hard. Three years of science preparatory classes. Since he was a kid, airplane posters have decorated his room. He has just one objective, become a fighter pilot. In fact, having passed this entry exam is a breakthrough. Of course, it will not just be a holiday, but I'm looking forward to that. The first day of his new life is tomorrow, so Quentin is packing his suitcase. A padlock, a headlamp, a watch that lights up at night. That's good. A lighter, a sewing kit. No room for improvisation. Engineering students are going to start the year with a tough military training. During these two months, we have no telephone or internet. I don't know if we'll sleep in rooms. Probably not all the time, therefore, you have to have everything you need. To join the air school, Quentin has passed a very selective competitive exam. 80% of candidates are eliminated. Come on. Do you want to open it? Quentin will open it. Oh, absolutely. Do you have a knife? Being a former officer himself, Eric does not hide his pride. I was in the class of 86 of the Military Air Force Academy. If I count correctly, it must have been 30 years. You did well. I am very happy, proud, delighted, all the qualifiers imaginable. Cheers. Cheers. Like Quentin this year, there are a hundred to join the ranks of this elite military school. Based in the south of France, in Salon de Provence. Since 1935, the Air School has been training future officers in the Air Force. 
This is where the first stage of fighter pilot training takes place. Salon de Provence also hosts the famous patrol of France. Enough to give the chicks wings the first graders. Today is back to school for new recruits. Your first name. Quentin. The time for the distribution of the keys. Thanks. Here, no shared dorms, but small single rooms. Student officers are the elite in the Air Force, so they are pampered. I imagine that you have to check that everything works properly. Quentin takes a tour of the apartment. That's good. The faucet doesn't seem to be working. Here. Great luxury, I tell you. For three years, the school will become his home. With his comrades, they will first get trained far away from airplanes. Attention. Learn rigor and discipline to become the leaders of the Air Force one day. For now, they have to walk at pace. On the left, line up to the left. Head for the welcome picnic organized by second graders. When leaving, there is nothing left on the ground. No papers, no bottles of water, no crumbs of bread, nothing at all. They have 10 minutes to eat and strict instructions not to talk to their neighbor. Put in the deep end right from the start. Yes, it's quite brutal, but they don't let us start. <laughs> Talia is discovering military hospitality. She went to Sciences Po and like Quentin, she decided to become a fighter pilot. It is allowed to show that women are capable to do as well as men, to set an example for other women who would also like to do this profession. As of today, there are 15 of them in the Air Force. Talia grew up in the Paris region. Daughter of a father a factory worker and a mother employed in a restaurant, after a brilliant educational path, she chose to enlist at the age of 22. This athletics champion has no soldiers in her family. For her, the symbolic transition from civilian life to the army will take place in this corridor. Where is your drop-off point? 37. This afternoon, Talia receives her new wardrobe, including the traditional bomber jacket. Trying on is more complicated because Talia must always keep with her his two military notebooks. Never part with it except when taking the shower. I think that's the only exception. And the instructors told us, do you like our pair of balls? That's it, it's the regulated nickname. In the extremely masculine world of fighter pilots, she's going to have to make room for herself, but Talia is determined from a very young age. I always wanted to work in the security profession for the feeling of being useful, also because I feel close to the values of this community, that is, order, respect for authority, and so on. Have a good day. Army codes are also a regulatory haircut. Quentin just has an appointment with the hairdresser at the base. Sit down. His hair is already very short, but it doesn't matter. Everyone passes through this. The standard haircut is six millimeters on the top and three on the sides. We remove the paws with the stress made on hygiene. It is ideal to have short hair. The first day is a marathon for these young people. A kind of race for standardization. After the hairdresser, it's the master tailor's turn. Stand there in front of the mirror. At the air school, officer costumes are refixed one by one. You can lower them. We have only one model and we have to dress with only one model the different types of morphologies that present themselves to us, the big, the slim, the small, the strong. Do you fit in a bit in your dad's jacket? 
Maybe not in her father's jacket, but in an officer's jacket. Then afterwards. Yes, why not? This school is also a school of patience. The first term is mainly for military training. Quentin and Talia are going to have to fit into the army mold. I don't care about this girl that I never knew how to love, knew how to love. They are not very prepared for the arrival of women, these military women. Not really, but now is not the time to question that, I believe. For three years, these students will walk in step and become engineers. Flying will be for later. Eight hundred kilometers away, in Indri Lore, the school base of Tours. Richie left Salon de Province two years ago. He now wears an aviator suit because that's it. He's flying a fighter plane. At this school, no group lessons, but one-on-one -on -one briefings with an instructor. So for the act check, it's uh, it's 8, 10, 50, 2, 30 seconds. Stop. Stop. And uh, we, in expect English. we expect to step in around 30 minutes for takeoff at 8 precise. Tell me, Captain, we're in the French or the American Army. From our young years in the Army and our first flights, especially in tours, from the briefing to the debriefing, everything takes place in English. So we will perform the cross formation takeoff. English is the language used during external operations. Pilots must therefore become bilingual, but their learning methods are sometimes unexpected. We explain a lot of exercises with these planes to show them the staging and the position to adopt, and read the benchmarks for the different training courses. They are our daily toys. Days not quite like the others. It requires the central protective accessories. We're going at 650. Roger that. Like these anti pants. It allows us to withstand the load factor during the slightly tighter evolutions. It is during turns that the acceleration is greatest. The pants are inflated to send blood flow to the pilot's brain. You've grown fat. A little bit, my captain. We eat well. Today. Ready, captain. Richie carries out his mission on a mythical aircraft. The Alpha Jet. Let's go for the tour. Every July 14, Alpha Jets fly over our heads. Because before flying a Rafale, all young pilots first get trained by the Patrol de France. They call it the Gadget. It's a small emotional nickname because it's an airplane that marked generations of pilots. After 90 hours of flight on this plane, Richie now has all the reflexes of a real pro. Before each flight, a visual inspection of the aircraft is performed. We test everything. We check that there are no open hatches, no foreign objects on the device. The pilot is responsible for the machine in flight. He must therefore check before leaving that everything is in order. It's good. Richie completed his training in tours. It's good for me, it's good for driving. Today is his last flight to this school. The next day, he gave himself a moment of rest. Hello. Under this helmet, behind his glasses, it's really Richie. A small jaw area. A small jaw area. His parents are shopkeepers in the resort of Dualbus, where the pilot grew up. Richie is now taking advantage of one of his rare permissions to change air and hit the slopes. It's great to be able to come back here, recharge your batteries, and put on the planks. 
it's cool. Are you all right? We designed a small slalom. Several of his childhood friends are ski instructors in the resort. Come on, former instructor. There is someone who falls. Richie himself was hesitant to get into this profession. When they meet again, friends get back to their good old habits. They ski on patrol. Richie only comes home three or four times a year. So, every time he visits, we're going to have a little beer at the bar. An obligatory visit to the village bar. In the middle of his peers, Richie is reunited with his fiancée, Caroline, and his parents. When he was 16, I said, what do you like best? A motorbike or a pilot's license? He did not yet have a driver's license. He was already flying alone on a plane. It was 10 years ago. Since then, Carol, her mother, has had time to get used to the risks of the profession. I prefer it on a fighter plane than in a car, a salesperson, I think. I like him better up there. Why? There is less chance of something happening to him up there only on the road. I join you. Confident Carol is also well surrounded. I'm going to liquefy myself. His future daughter-in-law is also an officer in the Air Force. Her specialty is raiders. I'm one of the links in the chain. We are the end of the chain, the pilots. You need a lot of specialties, including Carolines, to make our planes fly. Caroline is assigned to the Nancy base, nearly 1,000 kilometers from Richie's. Not bad. The couple only sees each other once or twice a month. We're going to say that this period when he moves every six to eight months. We know it's temporary. Soon to be over. Soon over. We are soon done taking the months on the calendar. As a soldier, she understands better all the constraints related to my job. It can be operational constraints, mission constraints, of availability, of transfer. Like Richie, Caroline could be brought to go off to war. I think it's something that we both agreed to. We will be happier to meet again. Who will take care of the children? The one that's left. If we leave at the same time, the grandparents, they will be happy in the mountains. The couple shares the same commitment, but only Richie will one day be responsible for dropping bombs. Can you already imagine going to your plane? Your plane, which is now equipped with a pod, a cannon pod. In this gymnasium at the Kazakhs Air Base in Gironde, Richie is in the middle of a TAOP session, technique for optimizing potential. I present myself in front of the target. I am waiting for permission to fire. Relaxation here helps to remember procedures. This time, the weapons are very present. Today, Richie has to bomb a target. His eyes remain closed, but his fingers are moving as he would in flight. I aim with the reticle. Only Pascal's voice guides him. A mental trainer for 20 years, Pascal has participated to a small revolution within the Air Force by adding a psychological dimension to the training of future pilots. It's particularly hard at first. Why? Because... It has often been synonymous to weakness to the need of a mental trainer to be successful in one's missions. This has long been wrongly accepted in the minds of fighter pilots. Now we finally understand its help. Despite mental rehearsal, nothing prepares these young soldiers to the reality of killing an enemy. Of course. It's part of our job. We have to keep that in mind. But today, no, I am not focusing on that. It will come at an appropriate time. You have to understand that we are not killing machines. We are the armed wing of politics, and in the end, we implement the decisions of the French. Deployed in 10 countries on three continents, the French army has a crucial need for a fighter pilots. 
What the general public doesn't know is, the fact is that the majority of them do not have a plethora of diplomas. They only have a high school diploma. Back to the Air Force School in Salon in Provence. Here, two training streams coexist. The elite, the engineering pilots, those who will become the leaders of the Air Force. And simple pilots who were only trained to fly. It is the case of Jean Charles. Come on, I have 3010F. What are you doing, Jean Charles? Um, I am preparing for the mission later. That's what we call a nav log. It allows us to have reminders about skidding on the important points of the mission. Normally, you know everything by heart, but if at some point during the mission, we're a bit in the thick of things, you just have to look down and you have reminders. When we start looking this, it means the mission was a failure. Are you ready? You think so? Normally, we don't move from the flower to the gun on a mission, that's for sure. It has been 18 months since Jean Charles started his training. Before boarding a fighter plane, first of all, it's on the controllers of this small device for students to learn to fly. Starting the mission, we're focused on that, solely on the mission and the procedures to be put in place. This morning, it's a navigation test with the instructor. Okay. 88 knots, 150 feet, it goes in. The apprentice pilot must follow a very specific itinerary using external references to the maximum. We take out the map. Don't focus too much on the map because you aren't looking outside anymore at that time. At 11 minutes, you have to identify a highway with. What was your main point of reference? It is Lumel that is here. A highway that will go up leads from the south. The second difficulty is the calculation of the remaining fuel. Just 43 minus 17, how much is that? 43 minus 17. The result is important because on a mission, a fuel error can be fatal. At first, flying low at 500 feet alone requires a lot of attention. Often, they have trouble staying the course and they also make mental miscalculations. Several times a week, Jean Charles tests aboard this small plane. It will be like that for another year. Then, the army will decide to entrust him with a fighter plane or not. We know that we are in the hot seat at all times. As a result, work can stop overnight. So, to relieve the pressure, the apprentice pilots meet regularly off the base. Tonight, it's carting outing for Jin Charles and his friends from promotion. Pilot access. That's good. They come from all over France. The last one pays for the tour. Their profiles are varied. It goes from the 18-year-old who has just graduated from high school to others who are older in professional training. This is the case with Jean Charles. He gives his forecast for the race. I think Gary is going to be number one. He was 16th at the French Karting Championship. The last one has Dave who has still not passed his license after two attempts. To become a fighter pilot, no need to have a driver's license. On the other hand, a perfect view is essential and the medical screening is thorough. Since I am a bit older, I don't want to be fooled by a young person. He's the senior of the batch. So tonight, Jean Charles is putting his honor on the line. There's no taking chances, even between brothers in arms. Jean Charles is going strong. On the side of the unlicensed pilot, no surprise. He is at the bottom of the rankings. Annis, who has toured. I didn't make my wallet. We know the story. Far away from their families, the students became friends. Get on the podium. We're going to try and to love. We are well bonded. It's great. 
It's our second family. That's why it's important to have good cohesion. It's the most sentimental of the class. Tomorrow, Jean Charles will leave his classmates. That's for you. Let's cheer again. He's going to join a fighter pilot squadron and experience his first flight in a burst. Heading east of France, St. Dizier Air Base. It is the hometown of Jean Charles. He now meets up with a childhood friend who himself has been a pilot for 10 years. Jean Charles, did you sleep well? Yes, my captain. Sebastian became a captain. Despite their friendship, Jean Charles is subject to the respective hierarchy. Here, he must make a good impression. We're not at home. We're in a combat squadron. We're not in school here anymore. We have to be as flawless as possible. Today is a big day. It's the first time that is going to get on a fighter plane. Good morning. I'm not afraid of anything. This flight of motivation is a tradition in the Air Force. There are some who react very well, others a bit worse. Young students are not yet used to accelerating. Well, it's human. If you vomit, you vomit. Just try to do it properly. Here is the pouch. We'll see if we use it tomorrow or not. Jean Charles will make his burly flight behind Sebastian. So here is the Rafale combat vest. I'm going to let you put it on, then I'll explain the details. You lock it with the two little carabiners. As a good friend, he gives her some valuable advice. Avoid coffee just before the flight, even if you're not awake. However, you still need to stay hydrated. For urgent needs, the army has planned everything. We have pouches, a bit like vomit pouches by Jane Charles, which are specially designed to defecate on the plane. It requires training, because the day you do that for the first time, it's on an operational mission. We're going to deliver weapons. We may not succeed. Before you get on the plane. Because we're getting older. It is installed in this simulator. Put the strap on the right here already. Jean Charles already has some notions of pilot. Tomorrow, Sebastian may let him take over. That is possibly if I want to leave you in control. I can't wait. It's already insane. It's the icing on the cake. For Jean Charles, this flight to Saint Désir has a special flavor because he is a child of the country. Tonight. That's it. Sit down. He meets his family at the aperitif. One topic of conversation, his flight the next day. Do you have the snout? The snout can freeze. The snout is the pig's snout. She is happy. Sophie, Jin Charles' mother, is even more excited than her son. In Rafaela, do you realize? That is unbelievable. Nurse turned teacher, she is proud of Jean Charles' commitment. I am a patriot. I love France deeply. I am proud that my son is a French soldier and that he is defending our country. Even if the news sometimes forces her to imagine the worst. I discussed this with Jean Charles. And I even said to him, are you afraid to die? Of course, there are risks, but military training means that we train on a daily basis 24 7 to manage these risks, and we're not hotheads to leave the knife between your teeth. The next morning, Jean Charles joins Sebastian for his flight. It's on a Rafale, the roles of military aircraft that the duo is going to take on board. It's excitement and apprehension. We realize how big it is. We've been waiting for it for a long, long time. Already there, motivation is returning. Jin Charles and Sebastian's Rafael will serve as a leading aircraft as part of a flying patrol exercise.
Both planes will take off simultaneously. Flight 64, ready to take off. A particularly dangerous moment. The planes are only a few meters apart. There it is, it's coming. Once at 8,000 meters above sea level, the pilot gives a short demonstration of Rafale technology. He let go of the handle. Now my hands are in the air. The speed is maintained automatically. You're going to tell me. That sucks, car driver. You're not piloting anymore and all that. In fact, the system requires so much that if you can be relieved of driving, that's not bad anymore. To heckle one of today's co-pilot peepers, Sebastian takes over. We're going to do a little flip. Are you ready? It's a crazy thing. High-speed turns follow one another. Jean Charles seems to be taking it well. Are you all right? Yes, great. But the second plane, flown by a student, has difficulty keeping up. There are a bit of problems there. If I pull on my handle, look. Do you see how far he is? Did you see how he leaves? After one hour of aerial maneuver, Jin Charles Rafael returns to the base. So Jin Charles? It grows. It's really your open flight for me. 100% pleased. So you were born for this job? That's not for me to decide. <laughs> I already have it in my back seat. Congratulations. He didn't bother me, he was nice, and he withstood the shock. It's all right. The apprentice pilot withstood accelerations of up to 8G. That is eight times its weight. How much do you weigh? We're not going to say. 70 kilos? Yes, pretty much. Yes, 70. Starting tomorrow, a new driving test awaits Jim Charles. He will have to surpass himself because only the best get their place in fighter pilot schools. Return to the south of France, next to Salon de Provence. It's been 45 days since Quentin and Talia military training started. The officer cadets of the flight school are in the middle of an upsealing session. Perfect. Native of Savoy, Quentin is used to the mountains. Below Talia, the Parisian seems less confident. Just like at home. Above them, a student is stuck in a tricky position. Try to get the rope through. His classmates are trying to help him. Is he going to make it? He can't climb the cliff. As a good player, he comes back down and keeps smiling. It's tough, but we have fun, and we learn a lot of things. This test day is intended to confront officer cadets to their acrophobia. The chief warrant officer does not spare them. Don't bother to help me. It's your job anyway. Talia, the political sciences freshman, still has a bit of trouble with the military mindset. It's hard sometimes, but it's way more interesting than sitting in a classroom. The young woman does not regret leaving her books for more physical training. Even civilian life to her seems very far off. Talia, how does it feel wearing the uniform? I've been wearing it for several weeks. I don't feel like I'm wearing it anymore. It's even more strange to go back to civilian clothes now. If they're all wearing the same uniform, however, some cadets have no intention of flying. We're definitely not pilots. We're pilots on base. We're going to drive our pens, maybe a bit of a guns. We'll see. The Air Force would be much better off without a pilot. A good-natured rivalry. Put on your helmet before I hit you. Between future base officers and elite pilots. After almost two months of effort, they are coming to the end of their military training. 
Tomorrow, these students will experience the first major event of their career. They're going to become officers. And Quentin's dad wouldn't miss that for nothing in the world. I don't realize I'm going to have my son become an officer today. It's still a bit abstract for me. It's been two months since Eric saw Quentin. My big one. Great. You haven't changed that much. A little bit of hair. Little by little, the lieutenant colonel lets himself be overcome by emotions. Thanks. Especially when his son puts on the same uniform as him. Don't move. Raise your head. That's perfect. That's very good. Perfect. Great. It's still strange to see him like this. I admit that now. I too can see myself in the mirror. It seems as natural to me as you do. I admit that. In a few hours, Quentin will officially be Air Force Lieutenant. Hello, mademoiselle. Like Talia, Eric meets her for the first time. Congratulations. I couldn't see you, if I may say so. Thanks a lot. I'm going to attend the dagger ceremony. It's a privilege I admit that I am not giving up on my pleasure. No parents are attending the ceremony. Eric is an alumni of the school, and that gives him some rights. <laughs> Don't laugh, because you're all going to go through it. For his son, he wants everything to be successful. Perfect. You forgot a button. Maybe we'll do it again. <laughs> Every detail counts. When you say hello, Quentin, look, when you greet, it's not like that. The 2016 Air School class is finally ready for the traditional dagger ceremony. Reserved for the elite of the Air Force. The images of this initiatory ritual It's in silence that the promotion of Quentin and Talia gets their daggers. They represent the trust of the military hierarchy to its very young officers. They will one day be called upon to command the Air Force. At the other end of France, on the Atlantic coast, it is in Kazov that Richie, the pilot at the end of his training, now lives. He'd already received his dagger five years ago. He is now beginning a new learning phase, aerial combat. It's okay. You look good with it. Thanks. I'm already late. You're already equipped. His roommate is also a student pilot. They are still in training, but they get paid. At the rank of captain, Richie earns 4,000 euros net per month. Getting dressed in the morning is easier. We are not spoiled for choice. The daily life of the two pilots is set like a clock. The checklist. Cap, badges, cell phone, wallet. Okay, all good. These are professional training courses. Ready? It's good for me. The two students are expected by their instructor at 8 o'clock a.m. Good morning. Thanks. Have a nice day. Thanks. For the first time, Richie is going to learn to shoot at the enemy. Thanks. As always, this takes place in private lessons with an instructor. Today, it's Commander Romain. We will see the air-to-ground firing modes and also the air-to-air -air firing modes. You settle in, you check as usual. Harnessed as if he were going on a combat mission, Richie settles into this flight simulator. You don't get that little gurgling sound in your stomach when you start the engines. We are not sick with our heads down. Otherwise, the sensations are exactly the same. At this advanced stage of training, one flight out of three takes place on the simulator. 
Now, the aim is to learn how to deliver weapons. It's the upper phase. To wage war. To wage war, exactly. 8055, prepare for takeoff. From the control room, Commander Romain scrutinizes Richie's every move. Its first mission, bombard ground targets. That's its target. It's this circle that's there. After a while, you have to freeze. Block. Block, block, block. Now you have to aim. Several tests are necessary for the student pilot. Before successfully bombing, the instructor can validate the points of impact from this computer. Here, we have a broadcast of the target that's going to be here, but that's pretty good. Second challenge, to fire on another plane in mid-flight. The little black spot that you see with the trail, it's the enemy plane. Is it good for you? It's going to be good. The missile there is gone, and it continues with cannon fire. Richie seems to be more and more comfortable in his fighter plane. I think I will quickly get a taste for it. Learning to wage war is also learning to manage crisis situations. At the Kazog Air Base, there is also a lake. Students train there. This morning, Richie swapped her flight suit for this neoprene model. It's a bit flashier. It's the new winter collection. We're hot in here. Richie's going to have to deal with a situation that all pilots dread. His plane crashed into the water, and he must get out of it as soon as possible. You have to be comfortable everywhere, in the air, on land, and in water, if possible. Of the 30 participants, only one girl. No one has ever died from it, as we've been told. It should go well. This aquatic course simulates different parts of the plane, which would have dislocated in contact with water, to ensure its safety. Richie is followed by seasoned divers. Use the tenderloin. An element like that is for breathing. You have to take advantage of it. While he succeeds in overcoming the first hurdle, he hears a familiar noise. Does it have gusts that taunt you? They give me courage. The purpose of this endurance test is to test Richie's ability to manage stress. Like during the snorkeling under an upturned zodiac. The pilot must first get into this barrel and catch your breath. Go back up to immediately dive back in. Grab this rope and cross this five meter long pipe before finally getting into the open air and to reach his canoe. I'm going to be content with these types of channels, which are a bit of a rugged, yes, but will be very effective, and which will still be able to save lives if necessary. If his plane crashes at sea, Richie will be alone. He must therefore know by heart the actions on which his survival depends. Now I'm going to collect the side parts that are called the Pilgrim, in which I'm going to take shelter. The objective is to protect yourself from the cold and humidity. For seasickness, pills are provided in the emergency package. Even if you have sea feet, you will take them to avoid being sick and falling into the cycle of dehydration. Very well. In 10 years, only one French pilot really lived in this extreme case. As they say, hard training, then easy war. For his first combat mission, Richie will still have to wait. It's going to be another two years before being ready to go into operation. Two years rowing. To row and to have fun from time to time. 
End of exercise. A helicopter is sent to the crash area to hoist the pilots in distress. This kind of disaster scenario is an integral part of the fighter pilot training. A few days later, on the tarmac of the tourist base, there is a large audience. It's the official ceremony that families and friends are waiting for. The captain successfully completed the various stages that are bringing him in today to receive fighter pilot wings. With five of his classmates, Richie receives the prestigious McCarran of fighter pilots under the watch of his parents and Caroline, his fiancée. A small tear, a little big. Are you the wife of a pilot today? Not the wife yet, but yes. For Richie, it's the culmination of 350 flight hours and seven years of hard work. Congratulations, my son. What does the dad feel? Relieved, liberated, free. It is obvious that we share slight similar anxieties as him. Free at last. They're not going to take me for a stroll in the mountains that does me so much good. We are proud of you. Thanks. Today, Richie has fulfilled his childhood dream. I am quite moved and quite proud to carry these wings on my torso. It's the accomplishment of a lot of things. These are the wings that represent my arrival in the fairly closed world of fighter pilots. Richie does not yet know what plane the Army has in store for him. This is the one we want. Mirage or Rafael. His assignment will be decided based on his final ranking. At least we're good looking. Not bad, very beautiful. Richie will soon be joining an operational squadron. He will still need a final year of training before leaving to fight in the war zone. In Western Africa, for example, where French forces are fighting terrorism. For safety reasons, you won't see the pilots' faces that we met. We are in Niamey, capital of Niger. Since August 2014, fighter planes take off from this airbase every day to identify and bomb terrorist hideouts on the ground. Between flights, my shoulders still hurt a bit. Fighter pilots meet in this improvised gym. Today's work is going to be eight reps spread over three rounds. It is in music that they release the pressure. It's almost like being in an aerobics class. We speed up, we raise the cardio. Remember to breathe well. There is nothing anecdotal about these exercises. To avoid pain during flight, pilots need to work out. Stop it. If, for example, we take people who go by car when they drive for a long time, they have pain due to the sitting position on the seat. The pilots stop every two hours. That won't be the case. On a mission, French fighters can fly for up to eight hours at a time. I can't hear you breathing out. Pilots, therefore, need to get used to daily flying and to shorter nights. Pierre is the newbie, the latest to arrive on the base. It's a bit of a peculiar rhythm. At first, it was difficult, climate change, all that. The first week was complicated. Until a few months ago, Pierre was a student pilot. In two hours, he is going to experience his first war mission. It's a mixture of excitement because it's something we've been planning for a long time. We want to do everything we've learned to implement all of this. There is a little apprehension too, because it's the first OPEX, it's our first time doing this. 
Pierre is going to fly with a new weapon. If in France pilots fly unarmed in a war zone, you always have to plan for the worst. We are not safe from encountering armed terrorist groups once ejected to the ground. It's unlikely to happen, but we're ready just in case. Main difficulty for pilots. Distances to be covered. The Sahel is a region that is 17 times as big as France. What plane is landing today? To cover the whole area, the fighting jets need to be refueled. We roll on our way back. It's a crucial flight phase for the mission because without in-flight refueling, given the distances, there is no mission and which is also very delicate because it demands very high piloting techniques. Refueling the plane will be a challenge for Pierre, but he may also have to fire his first missiles. If we shoot, it will be to protect French soldiers that are under fire. We are ready. Pierre is going to take control of a 2000D Mirage, a two-seater plane. We always fly a pilot in the front seat, a navigator in the back seat. It is the navigator that manages the arming of the device, several air-to-ground missiles. For this first combat flight, Pierre will be well accompanied. I have the advantage of flying with an experienced navigator who has already done a lot of war missions. It's slightly comforting though. After three hours of mission over the Sahel, Pierre is running out of fuel. The refueling maneuver is very delicate. At 750 km per hour, the pilot must insert the pole located on the front of his device into this little basket. Pierre succeeds the docking on the first try. 10 minutes are required for the Mirage 2000D to refuel. Thanks to this in-flight refueling system, the Air Force carried out the longest air raid in its history. 9.45 flight time from St. Desir to stop the jihadist movement in northern Mali. It was January 13, 2013, about 20 terrorist targets had then been bombed. That is the purpose of this elite training. Each year in France, about 60 young recruits receive their fighter pilot wings.